there's a group called Tailored Access Operations, and their job is the black bag team. One of the most sophisticated and successful cyber attack groups in the world, as Kapersky, one of the biggest antivirus companies in the world, has called them. The Equation Group, the name by which the unit is known, is linked to the NSA, and specifically to the Tailored Access Operations of the NSA. This unit is linked to numerous successful cyber attacks, of which Iran, China, Russia, and Afghanistan were its biggest victims. Their main source of their success is the usage of malware, which is malicious software intended to break or alter systems, often posing as a legitimate attachment to an email or an application. More about this later. They have been linked to more than 500 malware infections in over 42 countries in total. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about this elite cyber warfare unit and their operations. This is now more important than ever since most of the systems conventional forces are using are connected to the internet, and this increases throughout the years. There is a lot to cover, so let's dive in. First things first, it's important to learn about internet connected systems, which can be anything from toothbrushes, toasters, your laptop, telephones, routers, or F-35B Lightning fighter jets. And yes, I mention this because an F-35 jet was presumably hacked and taken over after the pilot ejected and it kept flying on its own for more than 24 hours before crashing. Someone with inside knowledge already warned for exploitable flaws in the fighter jets, but was ignored. Anyway, this concept is referred to as the Internet of Things. All of these devices that now get connected to the Internet can potentially be exploited and taken over for malicious intent. Now with a kitchen toaster, that's not really a big deal, but for F-35 jets, drones, and other weapon systems, that could be a game changer and completely alter the course of war. This, of course, is scoped to the battlefield where wars are fought, but imagine a cyber attack on the power grid or infiltrating the control systems of a dam. That could have disastrous consequences for entire countries and can be done from behind a computer screen. This is where tailored access operations of the NSA and many other nation-backed cyber warfare units come in. Now, when we talk about the Equation Group, this is often referred to as an Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT. Threat actors will get a name assigned, so the rest of the world will be able to keep up to date with everything that is tied to that specific group. Russia has a group called APT-28, or Fancy Bear. China has a group called APT-41, or Barium and Iran has a group called APT-33, or Elfin. These groups have certain tactics, techniques, and procedures that are part of their way of working. Opposing nation-states will keep track of these APTs, so wherever certain ways of exploitation are detected, they can be related to one of these groups. The FBI regularly puts out arrest warrants for some of these state-sponsored threat actors. If we look a little deeper into what these groups actually do, we see that their motives are mostly involving espionage and gaining control over the infrastructure of other countries. The way this works from a high level is that these advanced hacking units have ways of infiltrating and infecting systems that are not known to the rest of the world. This is called a zero day. A zero day is an exploit that a vendor of certain software is not aware of and therefore cannot patch its systems again. Once they are in, they will use it to gain control over the systems and gain intelligence that they could use to their benefit. The trick is, of course, to do this covertly and leave no traces behind, or give the assumption you are from another part of the world than where you were actually from, which also happens frequently. Whenever the country that is impacted researches what happened, when looking through the code or the means of exploitation, it might put them on the wrong track and you can trick them into believing that you are completely someone else. You can look at it as virtual spying, which can be used for intelligence gathering or counter espionage operations. Now with most of the high level details covered, let's have a detailed look into the equation group or tailored access operations and what they do. The Elite NSA Cyber Warfare Unit The Tailored Access Operations Unit was formed in the late 1990s when it had a different name. It wasn't named Teo until the early 2000s. 
It is reportedly the largest component in the Signals Intelligence Directorate of the NSA, consisting of more than 1,000 military and civilian hackers, computer hard and software designers, as well as electrical engineers and intelligence analysts. Some of their earliest work involved intercepting CDs with pre-installed software on it, which they altered to their liking and send on their way again. This was a good way of infiltrating into companies without being seen. Now for this day and age, that's not possible anymore as systems and devices get better protected and more advanced. A document leaked by Edward Snowden, a former NSA contractor, described that the unit has software templates that it could use for targeting the most commonly used vendor system, like routers, switches, mobile devices, and firewalls. Teo is now restructured as computer network operations, and they specifically infiltrate, monitor, and gather intelligence on systems that are foreign to the United States. As earlier stated, they are an advanced persistent threat, which is a common term to describe a cyber warfare attack group which has the backing of a nation state, or from the nation itself, or have an otherwise big budget they acquired somehow to conduct some of the most sophisticated hacks a single script kitty or hacker could not simply pull off. The headquarters of the TAO is referred to as the Remote Operations Center, based in Fort Meade in Maryland. They are part of a division within the NSA that seemingly has a department for every step of the cyber kill chain, in which they specialize specifically. As seen here, the cyber kill chain is a seven-step process for exploiting and leveraging external systems. Next to this, there are several departments who develop software specifically to target these systems and develop ransom or spyware to further exploit their systems to their liking. I would like to highlight one of the departments who has an interesting role. There is a specific department called S328, which is the Access Technologies Operations Branch. This unit reportedly includes personnel from the CIA and the FBI, who perform what are described as off-net operations, which means they arrange for CIA agents to covertly plant eavesdropping devices on computers and telecommunications systems overseas so that Teo's hackers may remotely access them from Fort Meade. Specifically equipped submarines, currently the USS Jimmy Carter, are used to wiretap fiber optic cables around the globe. This information is, of course, of classified nature and officially denied by the U.S. government. As the last piece of information, just to give you a glimpse of what might be happening completely outside of our knowledge, this was posted in an article dating back to 2013 in the magazine called Foreign Policy, and I quote, The TAO has become increasingly accomplished at its mission thanks in part to the high-level cooperations it secretly receives from the big three American telecom companies, namely AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. Most of the large U.S.-based Internet service providers and many of the top computer security software manufacturers and consulting companies have some form of secret agreement with the TAO in order to keep them at the forefront when it comes to protecting the U.S. interests. Now, of course, this will be denied left and right, but it wouldn't surprise you that in order to effectively exploit systems and devices, these corporations are extremely helpful in doing so. It is even rumored that Microsoft hands out knowledge about reported zero days so that the NSA can safely exploit them before they are fixed. Again, this is denied, but we wouldn't be surprised if this is happening on a large scale. Operations now that we know a bit more of who Teo is and what they do, let's have a look at some examples in which their involvement is rumored. Stuxnet is one of the most prominent examples. It goes down as one of the most sophisticated hacks of that time, in which the Iran Natanz nuclear facility was infiltrated. The equation group's involvement is rumored because it shows quite the amount of similarities of another equation group linked piece of malware called Flame which was used for spying operations in the Middle East. Now this case is special because the whole nuclear facility was air-gapped, which means that the facility had no connections to the outside world, something that only happens in highly secretive environments. Getting inside is normally a very daunting task, but had a rather simple solution, as Teo found out. It is rumored that USB drives were dropped on the parking lot, preloaded with malware, 
that specifically targeted the centrifuges in the facility. Humans are very curious by nature, and that is exactly exploited by this attack. Employees of the facility would pick up these devices and try to find out what was on there by inserting them into their highly secured devices. Once that was done, the malware was installed and laid dormant for months. As the attackers were trying to figure out how to maneuver their way into the network and the best path and plan of attack. It is rumored that a total of 12 zero-day exploits were used in the attack. And well, it's no surprise what happened next. The attack was very successful, completely destroying the centrifuges by spinning it at an abnormal speed, running into overdrive and destroying itself, setting back Iran's nuclear program several years. Israel, the US, and even the Netherlands took months of hard work and took part in developing the worm, which is a self-replicating piece of software, infecting computer systems around the world. What the Cyber Warfare Unit did not take into account is that eventually the software went out of control, infecting more than 100,000 systems all over the world. After the Natanz nuclear facility was hit successfully, the unit destroyed their own system, stopping it in its tracks. Shadow Brokers Now this group was focused on a daunting task. They wanted to bring down the NSA, and specifically the Equation Group. As stated before, the Equation Group, that is part of the Computer Network Operations Unit of the NSA, focuses on offensive security. Part of this unit was a large set of tools, which were specifically tailor-made for their cyber warfare operations. A tool set which only they possessed. A part of this large tool set was the exploit dubbed Eternal Blue, which exploited a vulnerability in the Microsoft implementation of Server Message Block, or SMB which essentially sets up a connection between a client and a server. Now, exploiting a vulnerability in this implementation allowed malicious packets to flow through onto the legitimate network. By exploiting this vulnerability, we have seen one of the worst ransomware attacks to date. The WannaCry ransomware, which infected 300,000 computers in 150 countries. They gained insights into what was otherwise meant to be a secret for a long time as they specifically built tools which were exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities to exploit foreign targets. However, a Chinese APT called Buckeye, or also named Gothic Panda, have been seen using these exploits in the wild one year before the shadow brokers claimed they took them and put them online. This might explain why the shadow brokers were so successful in their attacks, as the Equation Group's tools might have been used against them. This all dates back years and years, and we can all assume that the attacks and the APTs have been getting more sophisticated. Some people often use the following quote, There is a war going on, but nobody sees it, with which they refer to the cyber wars between the world powers. Now more than ever, wars are being fought on the battlefield and have a strong cyber warfare component, which will only grow over the coming years. I hope that with this video, you've gained some insights into one of the world's most advanced threat actors and become curious to find out more. Stay safe out there.